You know, whether you're just finishing off your snowmobile season and you want to put your trailer away for the year, or like us, you're starting your boating season in beautiful northern Ontario, making sure that your trailer wheel bearings are in good shape is essential to making sure that you don't have any problems during the season. So today, we're going to take off and service some wheel bearings on our boat trailer up here in beautiful Blind River. So why don't you sit back, grab yourself something cold to drink, and enjoy Dino's Tinker Shed. It is absolutely spectacular here. See you in a minute. Trailer axles and in turn their bearings have not really changed a whole lot over the years, with the first roller bearing being used by the Egyptians around 2600 BC. Think logs. Now these developed over the years and they developed into wooden and then steel ball bearings, but it wasn't really until 1898 that Henry Timken received a patent for the first tapered roller bearings that we see in axle hubs today. Still, that was well over a hundred years ago with little to no change in the design. Now these tapered roller bearings are tough and they can last a long time provided they're lubricated and that they don't become contaminated with dirt. Now this means that regular service and inspection is required if you want the maximum service life from the bearing itself and don't want to be stuck on the road with a bearing failure. Trust me, this has happened to me and it isn't fun. It's better to do the service ahead of time. So today we're going to service our bearings. We're not going to replace them. And let's get a look at that now. We're going to actually service the bearings on my brother-in-law's boat trailer. So once we chalk the tires on the ATV, we're going to actually turn our attention to taking the wheels off. Now to do this, I'm going to use our four-wheel wrencher, my brother-in-law is, to break the nuts free. And then we can jack the tire up off the ground. Now I know I should have jack stands here, but we just didn't have any up at the camp. I'm going to then spin off these lug nuts completely and the tire comes off. This exposes the actual hub. So the hub contains your bearings, the bearing seal, and the retaining system that's underneath that dust cap. So that dust cap has to come off. And to do that, my brother-in-law is going to use a small screwdriver, get in behind that lip, and just pry it out. Now you can use a soft-faced hammer and just tap the outside and turn the axle, and it'll come off as well. Underneath, you can see that the bearing is still fairly well packed with grease. And underneath that grease is a cotter pin. So he'll straighten out the cotter pin and then pull it out. That cotter pin is designed to maintain, or sorry, retain, the castle nut that holds the bearings in place. So once it's out, he can unthread that castle nut, and this is what it looks like. Once that's off, he can just pull straight back and the washer and tapered bearing will come out nice. as one unit usually. Then it's just a matter of sliding off the rest of the hub. And here's what it looks like once the hub's off. The axle shaft is nice and clean, there's no rust. And you can see at the very back, on the upper lip is where your seal rides and it's nice and clean and smooth. So here's what we've taken off so far. We've taken our lug nuts, our dust cap, a cotter pin, castle nut, thrust washer, and the outer bearing comes off as well. The inner bearing is held beneath the dust seal here, the bearing seal, and let's have a look at that now. 
Okay, so we know that the race here, or sorry, the seal is letting some water into the bearings. It wasn't terrible, so we'll probably be able to reuse the bearings and repack them. But we'll grab the new seal out of the kit and replace this. This just basically pries out, and then you can repack the inner bearing, put it in, and then tap the seal back in onto the hub. Okay, let's get that done. After clamping the hub in the vise, my brother and I will use a large screwdriver or a seal puller if you have one to take the seal out from the back side. Next, he'll use some degreaser to just basically clean off the bearings and inspect them, make sure there's no pitting or any rust on the bearings. These ones were in good shape. And then he'll just clean the outside up. He's just using an old chisel here to scrape all the crap off the outside. And he'll also look at the inner races here. Those are the shiny parts and they look really good too. This is still in good shape. So this is your regular roller bearing here that you will find in most trailer axles. So it's a tapered roller bearing so you can apply thrust to it and actually keep your hub nice and tight. Now when you're this one I've wiped clean it was really clean to begin with we really didn't need to rebuild these but it's good preventative maintenance. Now when you add grease to these you're not just putting grease on the rollers. You actually want to drive the grease down between the rollers and the race itself, which is right here. And I'm going to show you the old school method to do this. They actually do make devices that will pack a bearing for you, and they work really good if you have lots and lots of bearings to do. But for four wheel bearings on a trailer, I'll show you the old school method. So what I've got here is just a little dollop of axle grease. And every mechanic that I talk to says to actually use true axle bearing grease, not uh, your high pressure greases, as it's designed to actually flow at the operating temperatures of your wheel bearings. And what we want to do is push that grease inside those, those uh, rollers there. And how we do that is with a bit of a scooping motion. So you put the dollop in the palm of your hand, you grab the bearing, and you push it through the grease like that. And what that does is it'll actually force it up into the bearing itself. It's a messy, messy job, but you're actually forcing it up and through the rollers themselves like this. And you just keep going around until you get it forced up into the bearings. And you want to get as much of this grease up in there as you can so that it's coating the bearings. And every once in a while, if you can, you give it a little bit of a spin, coat the bearings, get that gob of grease back into the palm of your hand and then just keep going around like this. Eventually, you'll be packing the inside of the bearings and races with a nice good goo ball of grease like that. That actually looks pretty good. You can see that it's coming through the races. It's packed all inside. I think we've done pretty good. For this axle, we got a 1 and a 16th inch bearing kit. So this comes with a new seal, a couple new bearings, a cotter pin, and even a new dust cap. And this is a brand name axle. So it definitely is high quality. Here you can see the rubber seal that keeps the water out and the grease in. And here's how it sits once it's in the hub. It actually sits up on that little step at the back. So my brother-in-law is going to grease up the remaining bearings and then set them in with the taper facing into the hub. And then he's going to put the new seal on with the flat side facing out. Remember, this is the back of the hub. Next, using a block of wood, he just taps the seal in until it's flush with the actual outside of the hub itself. This one looks pretty good. Next, we're going to apply a generous amount of grease to the cavity inside of the hub itself. Some mechanics will say you can actually put too much grease in here, but I think for a boat trailer it never hurts to have a little extra. He'll slide this onto the axle and pop it up onto the seal, onto the sealing surface. Next, he'll put the other tapered roller bearing, the outer bearing, in place. The thrust washer goes on and then the castle nut. Now take a look, there's some holes through the axle there. You can see right on the end, that's for your cotter pin. 
So he'll thread the castle nut on, making sure that the castles face outward. This is what retains your nut, remember. He'll tighten this down while he rotates the hub gently. And then using a pair of channel locks or an adjustable wrench, he'll apply about 15 foot-pounds of torque while rotating the hub to make sure that they seat the bearings. And then back this off about a sixteenth to a quarter of a turn until you can line one of the grooves in the castle with the first available hole in the axle. Next, he's going to bend the ends of the cotter pins up to make sure the cotter pin can't come out. Most of these trailer bearings don't require any preload on the bearings themselves. They usually have a little bit of end play in them. And so the cotter pin actually retains your hub assembly onto the actual axle. So if you don't get these cotter pins secured in here, there's the potential the hub could come right off. You just need to make sure they're flat enough in there that the dust cap can fit over top and not hit anything. Speaking of the dust cap, mm -hmm. we put a little bit of extra grease into the cap itself and then he'll work his way around the cap, gently tapping it in until the rim on the dust cap meets the flange on the hub. And you'll see as he's tapping, it slowly works its way in. He rotates it and then keeps tapping away. Now, he just reused the old dust cap here. It's in fine shape. Lastly, he'll just fit the tire back up. He'll run the lug nuts up to the surface of the actual tire and wheel assembly. And then he'll just drop it to the ground so that he can torque the wheel lugs. Now, on a steel uh, five bolt rim like this, it's usually around 90 to 120 foot pounds of torque. He'll tighten them up here with the four way and then we'll come back later and uh, use a torque wrench on them. But look at your manual to find out exactly what you need. Well, that was about it. Now it's just a matter of putting it back into the sea can until it's time to go fishing. And it really is that easy to service your bearings in your trailer hubs. I hope this video was helpful. Now, most bearing manufacturers or hub manufacturers will tell you that you should be servicing your bearings about every 10,000 miles or about 16,000 kilometers. However, if it's a boat trailer like the one we service today, it really is a good idea to service those yearly. It doesn't take long to take the hub off and take a look at both the bearings and the seal. And because boat trailers spend so much time underwater when you're launching or retrieving your boats, and then they sit for a while, it really is a good idea to look at those yearly. There are other options out there, of course. There are things like bearing buddies, which we didn't cover in this video, and even easy lube axles from Dexter. Now, these systems allow you to use a grease gun to push fresh grease into the hub every time it goes underwater, or if you're doing a long snowmobile trip, you can pump a little bit of grease in there. But there is a difference between bearing buddies and a true Easy Lube axle. Easy Lube axles are designed from the manufacturer to take the grease that you pump into them. It forces it all the way through the axle to the back bearing back here and then pushes fresh grease all the way up and it collects in the cap up top here. Bearing buddies are actually the reverse. They're sort of an aftermarket add-on to any kind of hub and it replaces your dust cap here. And what they do is they have a spring-loaded cap that when you pump grease into it, it pushes the grease from the front to the back of the axle. And if the axle or the hub, sorry, isn't designed properly, and you put too much grease in, it can actually blow the rear seals out. So do a little bit of research before you just jump in and buy bearing buddies. And if you do, make sure you don't over lubricate them or you could run into seal problems. Also, we only serviced the bearings here. If the bearings turn out to be rusty or in really bad shape and they're really grimy, you may need to put a brand new set of uh, bearings and a new seal in. 
Now to do that, you have to knock the old races out of these hubs and press new ones in. And obviously we didn't get to that today. That could be a video for the future um, if I can locate an older hub that I need to service. But I think that's something that would make a good video too. Okay, well, I have a lot of things that I need to get done today in the shed. I had a really fun time up north. I wanna thank my brother-in-law for letting me tag along and giving him a hand to service his wheel bearings on his boat trailer. And if you enjoyed it, please leave your comment down below. Let me know what you think. And uh, hopefully I'll see you soon here on Dino's Tinker Shed. You have yourself a great day and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.